Pierre-Auguste Renoir, one of the great French Impressionist painters of the 19th and early 20th century. You might have seen some of his paintings such as Luncheon of the Boat Party or Dance at Le Moulin de la Galette. Revered across the world as a master of his craft, his paintings have earned a spot in the Louvre and other prestigious art galleries. This came with lots of wealth, generational wealth in fact, that he could pass down to his many children. And those kids actually did keep the money flowing. The Renoir name was all across the art scene, and they would be a massive force in cinema even to this day. La Grande Illusion, La Regla de Jeu, Madame Butterfly, Barbarella, The Spy Who Loved Me, Madame Bovary, and Les Enfants du Paradis. That's just a few important pieces with a Renoir in the credits. Following Claude's line, we get to Paul, the catalyst for the topic of this video. Paul, from what we can discern, made his living as an art dealer, mostly of his grandfather's work, but also had a small farm in La Rochette where he dabbled with cheese making. During an art sale in Toronto, he was approached by a short car salesman from Edmonton, Alberta, who also happened to own a hockey team, the always present Peter Pocklington. Peter bought a few paintings and the two struck up a small friendship. Paul throws out a crazy idea. Why don't you come visit my farm in La Rochette sometime? Peter loves it and not too long after swings by for a visit. The two get to talking and soon Peter, being the always on salesman, is pitching Edmonton to Paul. Something must have been in the cheese or the wine or whatever they were eating at the time, because you won't believe this, Paul was kind of into the idea. Crazy, but it did come with reasons. In a story recollected to journalist Dennis Coucherway, the Renoir extended family had actually moved to Canada previously, so this wasn't necessarily a new idea. His maternal great-grandfather mysteriously disappeared from his village in France in 1830 when he went out to buy tobacco. Twenty years later, his wife received a letter from him. He was living in Winnipeg. He literally pulled the scumbag dad move and went out to buy smokes only to never come back. Paul also mentions, and I quote, he had been a little naughty when he lived in France. He cites some bad blood between the French art community and the critics. In another article centered around Pocklington, it's mentioned that Renoir had issues with high French taxes and his declining quality of life. But behind all those cute little anecdotes is the real reason why they had to move. Paul's youngest son, Nicholas, was diagnosed with cancer at age five. And Alberta, even to this day, is a world leader in cancer treatment and pediatric medicine. He unfortunately passed just prior to the move in 1978. Perhaps the memories in France were too painful. He was serious enough to strike up a deal with then Alberta Agricultural Minister Marvin Moore to open a cheese factory near Sherwood Park, a suburb east of Edmonton. By his second visit to the province, he had made up his mind. The Renoirs were moving to Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Paul drug his family, kicking and screaming, to Edmonton at the end of 1978. His wife Louise, his mother Paulette, his four kids with their families, Jean-Emmanuel and his pregnant wife Sylvie, Pierre, Philippe, and Alexandre. Emmanuel, Pierre, and Philippe were all above the drinking age, but Alexandre was eight. I really feel bad for the kid who grew up in the French Mediterranean and had to walk off a plane in minus 18. Not long after their immigration, the first true Canadian Renoir was born. In February of 1979, Emmanuel and Sylvie's son Stanislas was born. But enough with the kid, there was work to do. The Alberta government had come through, they had a spot for the cheese factory, and had been working with Alberta goat farmers to get a steady supply of milk, to what would be Alberta's very first goat cheese production facility. One farmer interviewed had sunk about $65,000 into his herd in anticipation. This had a lot riding on it, but Paul wasn't really interested in holding on to the reins. He cites red tape from the provincial government that would eventually balloon into major delays. And when all was said and done, with half a million dollars worth of loans from various levels of government, Alberta Farm Natural Produce Limited was opened on May 13, 1980. It was going to change the landscape of the prairie's cheese palette from just cheddar to camembert, brie, feta, chevre, and other various European cheeses. The factory closed 14 months later, on July 14, 1981. 
It devastated the few farmers that had bought into the idea of a long-lasting prairie goat cheese industry. The interview with Dennis Kershaway mentions that the last orders were their largest. That's probably due to the discounted cheese slowly rotting in a warehouse somewhere. But not to fret. The Renoirs had their family fortune of paintings and drawings to fall back on. Oh wait, what was that? The Alberta government doesn't want to take drawings as payment on loans? Well, that sucks. Well, at least they got each other. Wait, what was that? Paul declared bankruptcy and then ran away to France, leaving his entire family there? Okay, well... I guess Louise is a talented seamstress, Manuel was working for a publishing company, and Pierre was an accomplished sculptor. They would somehow find a way to survive. And so they soldiered on through these cold prairie winters, going from failed pitch to failed pitch. Prior to leaving, Paul had propositioned the provincial government to set up a separate archive just for him, so he could keep his family's art in pristine selling condition. They obviously declined. With nothing left from their patriarch but a name, they decided to put it to use. Renoir of America was formed by the brothers in 1983. They were going to sell bottled water with their family's art on it. The venture didn't even get past the planning stage. But in March of 1989, Emmanuel was interviewed and let slip that the family was starting another bottled water business called Renoir Water Incorporated. In June of 1990, with $125,000 worth of private loans, Renoir water was pushed out to the market. The drink itself was carbonated and flavored in Nanton, a small town south of Calgary, at Nanton Soda and Water Limited, at least for their Canadian sales. For the American sales, they bottled it at Canadian Cool & Clear WTAA Incorporated in Las Vegas. The launch flavors were natural, lemon lime, lemon orange, and apple. And if this was 1990, I would suggest maybe against buying any Wata stock. Get it? Wata? It's silly. There isn't a definitive beginning and end with Renoir water, but from what we can find, they were initially breaking even, even hiring a local Playboy model to be their spokeslady. The Renoir water brand floated around on store shelves until about 1997. It wasn't the most expensive choice, but I suspect the bottled water market was filled with bigger brands by then. In 99, there was talk about bringing it back, but that's where the trail goes cold. If anyone has a Renoir bottle, please upload a picture of it somewhere for the world to see. This seems to all be lost media. Alexandra graduated from Edmonton's resident youth art aggregator, Victoria High School, in 1993. He pursued his passion for painting, eventually becoming a successful artist in his own right, moving from Edmonton to Vancouver in 2004. And he wasn't the only Renoir to leave. We've highlighted Paul's flight from failure, leaving his family broken without a father, but let's go into the other family members. Louise would move to Carmel, California to work at another art gallery sometime before the turn of the millennium. Manuel would move to San Francisco around 1994 to start a Renoir sculpture replica company called Red Star. Philippe actually stuck it out and got a job for Edmonton Tourism. You can thank him for advertising the opening of Silver City and Palladium in West Edmonton Mall. He shows up on a 2012 episode of Come Dine With Us Canada, which is a show where home cooks compete for a small cash prize. From Edmonton, he went on to market for St. Albert and now seems to work in Ottawa. Here's his recipe for cornmeal crusted shrimp tacos with tomatillo salsa. Sounds kinda good. Then there's Pierre, who kinda takes up the public facing part of the Alberta Renoirs. Let's follow him for a bit. He left Edmonton in 1987 and moved back to the old country. Either his dad was right, or he just wanted to be closer to his mom, because in 1990 he left France and moved back to California. Eventually, as tends to happen with people who move from the city, he came back to Edmonton with his wife Sujo. Together, the pair opened their own restaurant in July of 2004, La Table de Renoir, located in the middle of Edmonton's downtown, just west of the Citadel Theatre and the Stanley Milner Library. The Renoirs had been complaining for years that the yokels out west didn't know what good food was, and while Pierre may have been colorblind, he sure wasn't taste blind. That lasted for a few good years until 2008 when Sujo and Pierre would go through a very nasty divorce. He auctioned off some of his art to rebuild the concept as Renoir's cafe, but that doesn't seem to have materialized. Sujo would move to PEI and start up her own restaurant, and in Edmonton, Pierre would get back into the art scene after battling a few years of depression. The Alberta Renoirs are still in and around the Edmonton area. Genevieve Renoir took on a Renoir Sucks Instagram group in 2015 to mixed results. Pierre Pierre is still in the city and back to painting, and Dr. Sylvie Renoir, a local dentist, is married into the lineage. So the next time you're having a conversation with an art critic, you know, as you do, and they start chatting about Renoir, 
make sure to ask them to clarify the French Renoirs or the Edmonton Renoirs. Thanks for watching.